everyone, Francisima here. Today, we're gonna learn some more about intervals. Remember, an interval is the distance between two notes. To compute the distance between two notes, we count the bottom note and the top note. So for example, to find the interval between C and D, you just count C is one, D is two, C, D. That's an interval of two. So that's a second, C, D, a second. For another example, to find the interval between A and G, we're gonna count. So A is gonna be one, and then B is gonna be two, and then C will be three, D is four, E is five, F is six, and then G is seven. So that's seven, right? Let's, let's, re, let's recap that. So we're gonna start on A is gonna be one, and then we have B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So that's seven. That's an interval of seven. So A to G is an interval of seven, or it's called a seventh. You already know several intervals. For example, an octave is an interval of eight. Octaves go from, the from one note to the same note, higher or lower. So for example, if it was A, an octave up would be another A, or an octave below would be the A below, an octave, eight. B to the next B would be an octave, or C to the next C would be an octave, and etc. easy. Now, going from one note to the very same note, to the same pitch, is an interval of one, also called a unison. So, if you play a middle C on the piano, and then you sing the very same note or pitch, that's a unison. Or you could play it on a guitar. You could play the exact same note on the guitar, the same pitch, and that would be a unison, an interval of one. Half steps and whole steps are generally intervals of two, or called seconds. Now, some intervals could have different qualities. These qualities are similar to the different qualities of scales or modes. Some intervals have both a major and a minor quality. For example, seconds can have both a major and a minor quality. So if you have a whole step, that's a major second. And if you have a half step, that's a minor second. Seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths all have major and minor qualities. Now some intervals do not have major or minor qualities. They are called perfect intervals. Unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves are perfect intervals. Also, all intervals can be augmented or diminished. Augmented means to raise them another half step, and diminished means to lower them another half step. For example, a perfect fourth, if you raise it by a half step, it's an augmented fourth. A perfect fifth, lowered by a half step, becomes a diminished fifth. Intervals are important in music because they're part of what help us read, write, and hear melodies and harmonies in music. We practice identifying intervals using the music alphabet, note letter names on the piano keyboard, on the grand staff, using solfege, and by ear, by hearing how each interval sounds. Let's identify some intervals. Okay, we're gonna play a super fun game now. We're gonna use the piano keyboard to identify and name the following intervals going up, okay? So we're gonna listen to the unique sound of each interval. So let's start here, A to B, okay? So A to B, hmm, that's interesting. One, two. So that is a second. Okay. So that's an interval of two, also called a second. Okay, let's pick the next one. C to E. Okay, let's listen. Okay, I like that sound. So it's one, two, three. 
integral of three, we're going to call that a third. Okay, very good. B to G. Okay, we'll start here. B to G. Hmm. That's a cool sound. Let's count. So B is one. One, two, three, four, five, and then G is six. That's a six. How about F to A? So we have F, right? And then we have A. Okay, F to A. Hmm. I think I've kind of heard that sound before. Let's count. One, F is one, two, and A is three. That's a third. We have heard that one before. Okay, excellent. How about this one? D to G. D. G. Hmm. Let's count that one. So D is one, two, three, four. G is four. So we'll call that a fourth. Oops. Okay. How about D to A? Hmm. Should we count that one? So D is one. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be a fifth. Next we have A to C. Let's see. We have A up to C. Hmm. Okay, let's count. One, A is one, two, three. C is three. Okay. Well, that's a third. Let's go ahead and write in third. Okay. Then we have B to F. B to F. Ooh. B to F. Ooh, that's a cool sound. Let's count that one. So B is one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that's a fifth too. Then we have G to C. Let's start on this one. G to C. G, C. That sounds kind of familiar too. Let's count. G, A, B, C. Right? One, two, three, four. That's a fourth. Okay. Then we have C to C. Okay. Hmm. That could be two things, right? So it could be C to C, and that would just be a unison because it's the same note. It's the same pitch, right? So it could be one or unison. Or they said going up, so I'll go C to C. Ooh. That's my favorite. And we'll count it. One, C is one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an eighth. Or we call it an octave. Okay, how about this one? D to B. D to B. D to B. Hmm. Shall we count it? So D is one, two, three, four, five, six. B is six. Call that a sixth. Okay. All right. Last one here. E to B. Okay. I feel like I've heard this somewhere almost, right? Let's count. E is one, two, three, four, five. That's a fifth. All right. So we can also count intervals using solfege. So let's try counting them. So we're going to go from Do to Re. So we have Do, Re, Oh, and that's it, right? That's two. So that's an interval of a second. Okay, let's try the next one. Mi to So. We have Mi, Fa, So. So that's 
3, right? That's an interval of a third. Okay, how about so to do? Let's try. So we have so, la, ti, do, right? That's four. So we have a fourth there. Okay, how about fa to ti? So we have fa is one, right? Fa, so, la, ti. Oh, that is also a fourth. Okay, woo, how about re to re? So we start on re is one. Re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and then re again. That's eight, right? And we also said that that is an octave. So eighth or octave. Okay, how about la to ti? So we go from la, ti, oh, they're right next to each other, and that is a second. Okay, how about la to do? La is one, la, ti, do. That's a third. Okay, how about mi to do? So we have, starting on mi is one, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's six, right? So that's a six. Okay, how about ti to do? We have ti, do, oh, that's just two. That's a second. Okay, how about do to me? We have do, re, me. Just three. That's a third. Oh, how about so to la? We have so, la. Oh, they're right next to each other. That's two. That's a second. Okay, and then we're going to go from fa to re. Let's try that. So fa, this is one, fa, so, La, ti, do, re. That's six, right? So that's a sixth. Good job. Excellent. All right, now let's answer these fun questions. What note is a fifth up from C? All right, we're going to count five up, and C is going to be one, right? So C, that's C, that's one, two, three, four, five. It's a G. It is. G, what note is a second up from A? Okay, so if A is one, a second up, two, would be B. Okay, what note is a third up from G? Okay, we're going to count three. So G is one. Okay, then we have A is two, B is three. That's a third up from G, is a B. Okay. Oh, what solfege syllable is a fourth up from do? Hmm. So do is one. So do, re, mi, fa. That's the fourth, right? So it's fa. Oops. Fa. Okay. It says what solfege syllable is a fifth up from do? Okay. So do is one. Do. Re, mi, fa, so. So is number five, right? So I'll say so. Oops. So. And then what solfege syllable is a sixth up from do? Okay, let's see. So we have do is one, re, mi, fa, so, la. That's the sixth one, right? So we have la. All right, now let's do some interval practice on the staff. So, to identify an interval between notes on the staff, count the line or space of the bottom note up to the line or space of the top note, inclusive counting all the lines and spaces in between. Okay, so we're going to name each note and then write the interval for each set of notes. Okay, and the first two are done for you. I can help you too. Oh, and remember, if you have the book at home, you can spread the workout on this exercise over time if you want to. You can do maybe one or two systems a week, but I'm going to go ahead and do them all. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to look here. We're in 4-4. Four, four. So we have C and E. We know those notes. And then C, 1, space 2, 
and then the line three. So that's the third. Okay, then we have C and G. So C is one, space is two, line is three, space is four, and then this last line is five. So that's a fifth. Okay, all right. Now we're going to do them ourselves. Let's try. So I know that this is C, and I know that this is F. So let's count. We're going to count from the line where C is, one, and then the space is two, the line is three, and then F, the space is four. So this is a fourth. Okay, cool. I can do this. And then this is a C, this is a D. Oh, that's just one whole step, right? That's C, one to two. One, two. Okay, so that's the second. Okay, then we have C and A. Let's count. C, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the six. Okay, then we have C and C. Oh, that's a whole octave, right? So that's C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm, that's an eighth. Oh, but we know it's an octave, so I'll go ahead and put octave two. Okay, then we have C and we have B. Huh, I haven't seen that one yet. Let's try. C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's a seventh. Okay, then we have C. And look, there's another stem. So I know that there's another C here. Now, what is that? It's really just one note, right? So that's called a unison. Oops. Because you're playing them at the same time. Well, you're really just playing one note, but you're playing them at the same time, C and C. Okay, then we have C and G. Okay, you've seen this one before, right? I'll count it for you, but I think we're gonna remember soon. One, two, three, four, five. That's a fifth. Okay, and we've seen this one too. C, E, one, two, three. That's a third. Okay, next line, we have G. Okay, we haven't really seen this one, but I bet you we figure it out pretty easy. So G, that's the line, one, Two, three, four, five. That's a fifth. I think I'm getting the hang of this one. G and C. So one, two, three, four. That's a fourth. Oops, there we go. Okay, then we have G and B. See how we're starting to see some patterns here? This is easy. Third. Okay, then we have G and E. Okay, this is a little bit harder, so I'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a six. Okay, then we have G and a D. This looks pretty familiar too. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth. Okay, then we have G and F. Ooh, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, that's a seventh. Okay, then we have G down here and A. Remember when they're right next to each other like that, we know it's a second. And then this shape is getting familiar, right? We have G and D. We know that shape is a fifth. Then we have this kind of big looking one. It looks familiar too. G and G, right? One with the same note, but Different pitches, right? An octave apart, it's an octave. Also known as an eighth. Okay, then we have G and D. I know this shape. That's a fifth. Okay, next line. I, oops, I know this shape too. F and A is a third. Then I have F and C. I know this shape is a fifth. Okay, they're right next to each other again. F and G. I know that's a second. Then we have F and F. Remember, you see the two stems. So this is two notes, kind of. And then it's F. So I'll call that 
a unison. Okay, then we have F and we have D. Okay, do you still need help with this one? We'll count one, two, three, four, five. That's a sixth. Okay, very good. How about this one? Okay, we can see that one's a sixth. And D, or I'm sorry, it's an E. Oops. So we have F down here, and we have E. Okay, kind of similar to that one, but it's one note higher. But we can count to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we can figure that out pretty easily because that one was a sixth, right? Okay. Oh, these are easy ones again. We know F and A, and this shape is a third. Now we have F and B, and it's just one note higher than that one, so we know that one's a fourth. Then we have F and C. Now you can also see that it's just one note higher than that one while F is the same, but we also know this shape is a fifth. And we have F and F, and we know that is an eighth or an octave. Okay. Let's keep going, yay. Then we have C and we have E. And what is that shape? We know that is a third. Okay, now we have F and C. Okay, and we know this shape, right? That's a fifth. And if you're ever unsure, you just count one, two, three, four, five, okay? And another hint is when you have a space and you skip a space and then you have a space, you're gonna have a fifth. Okay, then you're gonna have G and D. Same kind of thing, you're gonna have a line and then you're gonna skip a line and then you have another line, or line one. Then you know you have a fifth as well. Okay, let's see what we have here. This is a D and a G. Okay, do you remember what this one is? If you're not sure, just count. One, two, three, four, fourth. Eventually, we're just gonna recognize them all because it's gonna be easy after all this practice. E and G, we have a third. Then we have B, and we have F, and we know that little interval here is a fifth. Okay, what else do we have? We have an F, and we have a B. Okay, what's this one? I know it's a fourth. So one, two, three, four, just to make sure. And we have D, and D. We always know this one is easy. This one is an octave or an eighth. Okay, then we have E and C. Hmm, this is a little bit harder. What is it? One, two, three, four, five. It's a sixth. We'll probably recognize that pretty soon too. Okay, then we have E and then G. And what's that one? That's easy, right? That's a third. Okay, next line. Okay, I'm starting to like this one because I recognize it fast, right? So we have an F and a C, and then that is a fifth. And then we have a G and an E. Can you recognize that without counting it? It's the sixth. Don't believe me? One, two, three, four, five, six. B. Then we have F and D. What's that one? Looks very similar, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, how about this one? G and C. Okay, that's a fourth. Then we have A. You're gonna get very good at identifying these. Okay, what's that? That's a fifth. How about this one? B and E. Okay, we have a fourth. How about this one? G and F. Okay, if it was one more, it would have been an octave, right? So this one has to be a seventh. How about this one? We have G to G. It's easy. Octave. Or I'll say if as well. Okay. Oh, these are right next to each other. This one is a B and this one is a C. So we know it's a second. 
about A and D. Okay, now remember this one. One, two, three, four. Almost looks like that. If this had been a, a space, skip space and a space, that would have been a fifth, right? So easy way to see that that's a fourth. Okay, then we have F and E. Do we know what that is? We know that here it would have been a fifth, right? And then here it would have been a sixth, and here it's a seventh. And we can count to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, how about this one? Easy one. Okay, we know this shape. Line, skip a line, line again. This is a fifth. Okay, then we have A, and then we have C. And we know this is a third. Oh, this is easy. Then we have a D and we have an F. And we know it is a third. Oh, oh, another one. Then we see a G and a B. And we know it's a third. Easy. Oh, a whole bunch of easy ones. Then we have A and E. And we know that is a All right, hmm, this is a little trickier. What's this one? That's a B and then a G. Okay, and I'm pretty sure this one's a six, but we can count one, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. Then we have D and G, and this is also very familiar looking. I'm gonna call this a fourth. And if you wanna check it, one, two, three, four. And this is kind of the same shape, right? So E to A, remember? We've got a letter line there. So E to A, what's that? That is a fourth as well. Okay, then we have A to D. What's that one? Same shape. We're going to also do fourth. Okay, and you can count it. One, two, three, four. All right, next line. Oh, this is the last line on this page. Oh, I'm going to be sad when it's over. A and G. Mmm, that's a big stretch there. Pretty sure that's a seventh. Because if this had been an A, it would have been an octave. And it's one note below, so I know that's a seventh. Okay, here I have B and C right next to each other, so that's a second. Okay, how about this one? F down here and D up here. What's this one? Okay, remember we know what the fifth looks like. It's a little bit higher than that. So this is a sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, definitely we got that right. B and E. What's that one? That's a fourth. Okay, then we have C and C. Oh, we know this one or an eighth. Then we have E and E, another octave or eighth. What else here? <gasps> F and F. It's another octave. Maybe they were trying to emphasize something here. Hmm. Okay. Then we have A and C. We know that one, right? That's a third. Okay, then we have G and B, and what's that? Third again. Oh, okay, now we have E and C. Okay, it looks a little weird like that, like, hmm, line, line, line. That would have been a fifth, so that is a sixth. And we can count it. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we did so good on this whole page. I'm so proud of us. Okay, now look, it says notice the cleft changes for the next page. And they give us a little warning here. See that? They said, ooh, now we're gonna be in the base cleft. So let's go to the next page. Yay, now we get to do base cleft. Ooh, I like practicing notes in the base cleft too. Okay, so let's look at the example. They helped us out here. We have A and C, but look, the shapes are exactly the same as the treble clef, right? So A and C, we know that's a third. 
And then we have F and C, okay? And we know this shape, line, skip a line, and then a line again, that's a fifth. Okay, then we have C and middle C up here. Okay, that's easy octave or an eighth. Okay, then we have a B and a C, and when they're right next to each other, we know that's a second. Then we have G and C. Okay, I think we know this shape, but if we don't, let's count it. One, so the space is one, line is two, space is three, and then the line is four. That's a fourth. We have D and C. Okay, so if this had been a D, it would have been an octave, but it's right below, so we know that's a seventh, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, then we have F and C. We know this goes from a line, skip a line to a line. That's a fifth. Then we have A and C. We know this shape is a third. Aha, uh -huh. we have two stems, but they're both C, C in both hands. So this is a unison. Okay, then we have F and C. We know the shape, right? Fifth. Okay, next line. We have F and we have A, easy one, third. Then we have F and C. This is getting to be a pretty easy one too, right? F, skip a line, C, and that is a fifth. Then we have F, I'm gonna put it on this side, and then G right next to each other. It's a second. Okay, F and B. Hmm, a little trickier, but we know this one, right? It's kind of like the fifth, but squished. So one, two, three, four, right? Then we have F, oops, F and D, right? D above that ledger line. What do we have here? Okay, let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a six. Mm, we haven't seen very many of those, huh? All right, let's keep going. An F again and an A, you know that one, third. Then we have F. Okay, and then what's this one? This is E, right? All right, look at all this practice. And then we know that F to F would be an octave, so F to E is a seventh. You can count it as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was right. Yay. F, O, and what's that one? That's an F, right? So F to F is an octave or an eighth, okay? Then we have F and A third. That one's not even hard. And then we have F and C. Okay, we know that one too. That's a fifth. Okay, next line. We have C and G. What's that one? Okay, remember space, skip a space, space. This shape is easy. It's a fifth. And you can count it. One, two, three, four, five. Anytime you're not sure, go ahead and just count it. And then we'll know for sure. Okay, I have C and F. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four. So that's a fourth. And we know also because look, it was almost the same C and it was down a note, right? So it was a fourth instead of a fifth. Then we have C and E. Same thing, we're coming down, so that must be a third. Plus you already know that shape is a third. C and D, and right next to each other, we know that's a second. And then we have the same note with two stems, right? So it's C, C, and that's a unison. Okay, then we have C down here, and C up here, that is an octave, an eighth. Okay, then we have C and E, and we know that's a third, you see? C and G. Hmm, that's a fifth. We know that one. And then we go C. Oh, and then B. Can you figure this one out? You can count it. But if you know it, it's a seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it had been a C, it would have been an octave, right? An eighth. And then we have C down here. And A. What's that one? Well, 
we know that it's just one one step down right so it's got to be a six so you can count it as well one two three four five six yep oops okay then let's look at the next line we have c and then g what's that you know that one fifth let's see this looks pretty similar to g and a d is also a fifth oops I wrote that kind of weird. Fix it. There we go. Fifth. Okay. Now we have a B and what's that? That's an A. Hmm. I know that's a seventh because it was almost an octave, but it's not. You can count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now we're sure. B and D. That's an easy one. Third. Then we have E, right? And B. This is an easy one. Fifth. Okay, then we have A. And then we have a D. What's that one? That's fourth. Anytime you're not sure, just count it. One, two, three, four. Then we have B and then G. Hmm, what's that one? I'm going to say it's a sixth. Okay? Now, before I even count it, I know that this line, space, or this line, skip that line, and then this line here would have been a fifth, right? But it's right above it, so that's a sixth. But you can count it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I have B, and I have B. My favorite. Active. Then we have C and G, and that is a fifth. Then we have, oops, I almost thought we were in trouble class. G and then B. Okay, that's a third. All right, next line. Still in face clef here. We've got C and C again. Yay! Octave. Oops. E. Okay, what do we have here? We have a B and a G. Okay, that is a six. And see how we're starting to recognize them faster and faster and faster? This is an A and an E. Okay, that's a familiar shape. That's a fifth. And we have G and C. Do we know this one? Fourth. Okay, how about this one? This is an F and an F, yay, my favorite octave. Maybe you'll find your favorite interval too. Octaves are so happy. Okay, then we have E and D. Ah, it's not quite an octave, but almost. It's a seventh. Okay, then we have D down here and we have an A, okay. So it's not on the line. So remember, this is a space still. And we're going to skip a space, and then we have another space. D, F. We're going to skip the F and go to A. So that is a fifth. Ooh, this one is very low. Remember, two ledger lines. That's a C. Okay, and then what do we have up here? It's a C. Yay, octave. Four, an eighth. Okay, then we have C. And G, we know that one. That's a fifth. And then we have F and C. Okay, that's a line. Skip a line. That's another line. F, skip the A, go to C. That's a fifth as well. Okay, next line. Oh, we're so close to the end now. Let's see. We have C. Oops. I wrote G, but I meant C. So glad we have erasers. C. Still looks like it has a little tail. Okay, C and F. Okay, what's that? Fourth, right? And then F and A. Easy, we know thirds now. Super easy. We already know that's a third, but I'm gonna name the notes A and C. Third. How about this one? Do we recognize this one now? The C and F? That's a fourth. How about this one? C and A, okay? 
We know that the, the C, E, G would have been a fifth, so A is a sixth. And you can always count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, C and G, we know this is a fifth. Then we have A and C, that's easy, and that's a third. Then we have B and A. Well, it's not quite an octave, right? So we know it's a seventh. And to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, then we have A. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant F. <laughs> I wrote F. F and C, right? F, skip the A, that's what I was thinking. Go to C, and then you have a fifth. Then we have C and G. That's a fifth, right? C, skip the E, go to G. That's a fifth. Okay, oh my goodness, we're on the last line. We're almost out of interval practice. Let's see what we've got here. So one letter line we know is E. And then up here is a D. Okay, it's not quite an octave, so we know it's a seventh. And then down here, two letter lines, remember, is a C. And then we have G. What's that one? Okay, so this is a line. We're going to skip the E line, go to the G line, so that's a fifth. Then we have F and B. Remember this shape? Fourth. And then how about this one? D and G. Looks a little different, but it's the same. It's a fourth. Look, one, two, three, four. And then we have B and G. Hmm, what's that one? That one looks almost like a fifth, but it's a little bigger, right? Right? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this is an easy one. C to E is a third. Then we have C to G. We know that one. Fifth. Then we have A to G. Almost an octave, but not quite. Then we have B to G. What's that one? That's like a little stretched out and we call that a sixth and then the last one here is c to e ah they gave us an easy one for the final and third and the double bar line we're done good job everyone so today we learned more about intervals and we practiced identifying so many intervals we identified intervals on the piano keyboard we identified intervals on solfege we identified intervals using letter names and we identified intervals on a staff. So remember, keep practicing all your songs, sing as you play, and memorize everything. Prestissima out!